Carol, Jennifer Carroll has been in the news a lot lately. Um, one of the things that's coming out is, and it's, it started out as kind of a minor um, aspect of the whole case, but, but then when she said something that made it, that kind of escalated it. A former aide is accusing her of being caught in a compromising position with another female aide. And last week you wrote a strongly worded column about something that she recently told a local television station. We're going to listen to this clip. One of Carol's former aides, um, all right, so this short clip is about that, that, um, that aspect. That's her being, Carol being interviewed by WTSP in the Tampa Bay area. And this is what Carol's response was to that allegation. So Nadine Smith, your column was titled, Dear Lieutenant Governor Jennifer Carroll, Yes, You Do Look Like a Lesbian. That's a very provocative title. What do you mean by that, and what was this all about? Well, the, the bottom line was this. Here she would, has been accused of abusing her authority, having an improper relationship with a subordinate, uh, firing somebody for walking in on them, being part of, a, a, of an administration where uh, surreptitiously recording one, an you know, one another's conversations, all of these charges and her response to all of that in total was essentially, do I look like a lesbian? And so it, the column was titled that, but it actually says, yes, you do look like a lesbian. You also look like a straight woman. You also look like a bisexual woman. This idea that um, there is a, this stereotypical definition of who lesbians are and what they look like uh, just couldn't be allowed to stand. And as someone who grew up in Florida and grew up in uh, the panhandle where images of, of uh, gay people tended to overwhelmingly be white, th it was really important to me personally to challenge this idea that, you know, this wide array, this diverse array of lesbians don't exist. And, you know, the, the nervous laughter and everything about it, I think, really it just hit people wrong. It wasn't, you know, I wasn't the only one who wrote about it. In fact, it really became uh, the subject of a lot of national discussion because the stereotyping wasn't just of uh, black lesbians. It was of black women in, in general. And I should say, for, for people who don't know, uh, Lieutenant Governor Jennifer Carroll is uh, African in descent, and she's from the, the Caribbean islands. Uh, Trinidad is, is her. Tr okay. And this, you, you bring out this point in this article about what does what that mean? Why do why are people so obsessed with thinking that they can um, they can have like a look applied to a gender identity or something like that? Um, what are some of the point, some of the other points you made in that in that column you wrote? Well, you know, it, it's about rendering an entire uh, portion of the population invisible, and you have to remember this is you know it wasn't just a vain comment and it wasn't just mean spirited. It was dishonest, and I think. You know, she spent 20 years in the military. She's a, a supporter even now of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, which al also known as Hide and Lie. And, and she has to know the consequences of, of that kind of invisibility. So, uh, you know, I, I think that rather than address the allegations that she was faced with, she sort of reached into a bag of uh, stereotypes of, of black people, of women, of lesbians, and hoped that that would turn people's attention away from what, what in the end, you know, this, this allegation that a former worker was fired because she stumbled upon this uh, adulterous affair really will be the, a small footnote to, a, I think, a larger story, but I think it's drawing attention to, um, you know, the, the larger story of what's going on in the governor's suite where people are recording conversations, uh, where there's some level of paranoia, um, those kinds of things. But on this issue, we just launched uh, a petition calling on the governor, the lieutenant governor, to apologize. Um, it has provoked a great deal of response, particularly from black women, uh, as I said. But but I think everyone who listens to that clip, uh, it hits their ear sideways. That you know, why would that be the response that you give to some pretty serious allegations of misconduct? We're speaking with Nadine Smith, executive director of Equality Florida. And if you'd like to join the conversation, please call eight one three. 239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. And I'm sure some of our listeners will want to continue the conversation about Lieutenant Governor, but I'm going to move on for a second because there's so many topics that we can talk about. One is Chick-fil-A. And uh, today, Occupy Tampa is supporting a boycott against Chick-fil-A. 
On Friday, August 3rd, there's a National Same-Sex Kiss Day at Chick-fil-A. What's, what are people so upset at Chick-fil-A about? Well, you know, I think Chick-fil-A's always occupied a, a place where, you know, there wasn't the um, clear connection between, you know, them buying a Chick-fil-A sandwich and that money ending up in the pocket of organizations that are dedicated to making the lives of LGBT people harder. And, and now that direct connection has been made. They, when you buy a, a Chick-fil-A sandwich, you're putting money into um, far-right anti-gay organizations that do real harm. And so uh, it's been interesting. I think it's a sign of the times uh, and, and uh, you know, evidence of the impact of social networking that you know, what sort of began as a, as a small protest has taken off in su such dramatic ways. So you have Jim Henson's company uh, severing their relationship with Chick-fil-A. And interestingly, one of the, the things that's making its way around the, the internet is a picture of a, of a Chick-fil-A uh, with a sign saying they're, they're recalling all of the Jim Henson uh, puppets, saying that the children, no, no children have been hurt, but their fingers are getting stuck in the puppets which just, you know, again, strikes everyone as a perhaps dishonest way of uh, addressing the fact that a, a much beloved company with a long history of, uh, with young people saying, we don't want to be associated with your uh, hateful anti-gay rhetoric. And, and to kind of expound on that, the, the Muppets, <clears throat> excuse me, the Henson Company <clears throat> has said that, that it won't advertise or, or do promotions with Chick-fil-A. <clears throat> I apologize for my voice. And that's in response to the owner of Chick-fil-A recently coming out and saying, taking a strong position about gay marriage and equality. Oh, absolutely. And, and in fact, uh, I, I think he was quoted in a, uh, a conservative publication saying, you know, guilty is charged in terms of, yes, we fund anti-gay groups uh, we take pride in that. And they'd always been sort of muted and dodged the question. They got immediate pushback from all different places. And then he made another statement saying he was going to stay out of politics and, you know, just get back to the chicken business. But then more and more of these things have begun to surface. And what is clear is this. When you spend money at Chick-fil-A, you contribute to uh, the funds that end up in the hands of organizations that work against gay people's uh, families and even support some some of the uh, you know the more nefarious stuff that that evangelicals are exporting to Africa. These sort of uh, kill the gay bills uh, in other countries. So it, it's it's ugly stuff, and people are woken up to it. And uh, and you know it's been a really spontaneous boycott. We're going to go to the phones in just a second, but one last thing on the Chick Fil A for now. Hope uh, if if people want to talk about it, we can still talk about it. But one last thing is. I want to ask you what the response was of the mayor of Boston. Yeah, there was really, uh, you know, I, I don't follow the, you know, who the mayor of Boston is, but here was a guy who wrote a really uh, strongly worded letter to Chick-fil-A that said, you know, every, you, what you support is, um, stands in opposition to everything that Boston stands for. Um, you know, I, I really don't even want to see you guys here, and the last thing I want to do is see a Chick-fil-A on the, on the Freedom Trail, a place that uh, embodies this idea that everyone should be treated equally under the law. So it was one of the most passionate, um, passionately worded, uh, you know, defenses of equality for the LGBT community coming from a straight person, coming from a mayor of a major city, and it was very impressive. Now, I have to say, I hope that he treats Chick-fil-A legally and doesn't, uh, you know, because too often the underdog is the one that has borne the brunt of this uh, we don't want you around here tactic. So um, having said that, it, really, it felt pretty good, though, to hear somebody speak with such uh, passion and, be, and take proper offense to what Chick-fil-A um, founder um, was espousing and what he's funding. We're speaking with Nadine Smith, Executive Director of Equality Florida, and you can join the conversation by calling 813-239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. Let's go now to David in Tampa. Hi, David. Very good. Do you have a question or a comment? Debbie Moore, caller, may have your first name and where you're calling from. Mike and Brandy, hang on.
Thank you for the call, David. Nadine? Well, you know, I, I think there are two questions here. One of them is, uh, or, or one of the things that's worth saying is that uh, Jennifer Carroll has taken anti-gay positions. She support, she supported and continues to support Don't Ask, Don't Tell, which, you know, when you think about it, here are people who are, who are willing to, um, whether you agree or not, put themselves in harm's way to uh, defend this country. And under Don't Ask, Don't Tell, I mean, I went into the Air Force Academy out of high school. Under Don't Ask, Don't Tell, you really, it's not just that you have to hide and lie, it's that you're also cut off from your support system. You, you can't receive uh, letters from your loved one. You can't do anything that demonstrates that you have uh, support in the ways that we all understand to be so crucial to people overseas. And so to support that kind of um, uh, you know, mean-spirited, uh, harmful policy kind of speaks to an idea that you think it is okay to force people to lie and hide, lie and hide. So yeah, does that come out of her religious tradition? Does that come out of a, a, a cultural uh, tradition that is um, particularly antagonistic to, to gay people, you know, perhaps, but it certainly isn't unique to, uh, you know, uh, the West Indies, and, and she certainly has found fellow travelers in, in that mindset. Um, and we know that that mindset leads people to, to live deeply in the closet, um, and, and she has to know that, you know, to be in the military for 20 years and support Don't Ask, Don't Tell is to say, I know that there are gay people here, and I know that their livelihood depends on lying. 813-239-9663. If you'd like to speak with Nadine Smith from Equality Florida, you can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. Let's go now to Mike and Brandon. Hi, Mike. You still with us, Mike? Um, hey, call back, Mike. Oh, um, here, hang on. All right, Mark, Mike, can you start over? Are you there? Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you for that call, Mike, and thanks for your patience at the beginning. And so, Nadine, uh, any comment about that uh, selectivity in Christians, uh, you know, s listening to some parts of the Bible and not others? Well, sure. I, I mean, I think the bigger issue is this, that uh, what Chick-fil-A is doing doesn't define uh, that particular religion. There are plenty of people who identify as Christians who don't take these sort of hateful anti-gay positions, certainly don't fund them. And I think that part of the challenge is, uh, you know, sort of ending this uh, theme that you know too easily is embraced by the media of God versus gays, or, um, when there are plenty of Christians, plenty of people of other faiths, who embrace the full equality of the LGBT community, um, and I and I hope that people will who um, consider themselves Christians uh, will rise up and, and sort of challenge that idea that uh, that Chick Fil A's owner Dan Cathy has really tried to push. Thank you for that call, Mike. Appreciate it. We're going to go to the phones in just a second. I'm going to give out the number one more time, 813-239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. I want to ask Nadine Smith, the Executive Director of Equality Florida, about a candidate in the Orlando area who's running for office. Her name is Gina Duncan. Tell us why she's on your radar. Well, first of all, she's incredibly impressive. Um, she's been a you know very active in the business community over there uh, she's running a really strong campaign and if she uh, succeeds her the election will be decided August 14th she would be the first transgender person elected to office in Florida so it would be a, a an historic uh, election and it would bring a voice into the in, into the public arena that I think really needs to be heard 
What's her background and what's she running for? What position is she running for? Um, she's running for um, county commission in Orange County. And Orange County has really come leaps and bounds in terms of equal rights. They recently passed a domestic partnership registry both in the, in the county and in the city of Orlando. Um, they've made it a centerpiece of their, the way they market Orlando as a place to attract businesses and a, and a place to attract jobs. That's Gina's uh, background, um, you know, in, uh, in finance, in business, and she has run the uh, Metro Business uh, Group there, which is sort of LGBT businesses and small businesses, and she's been a real part of, you know, marketing that area in a way that, that attracts companies that bring real jobs and bring economic growth, and Orlando has benefited tremendously uh, from cultivating a reputation as a welcoming and inclusive place to live, work, and visit. 813-239-9663 or dj at wmnf.org. Let's go to Brad in Bradenton. Hi, Brad. Thank you. 